young people globally who want to be like Elon Musk. What's your advice to them? They shouldn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you? <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. I, I'm not sure I would. I'm not sure I want to be me. One of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like you want something to be true, even if it isn't true, um, and so you ignore the things that uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. You need a team around you to deliver a lot of idea. How do you choose your team? Based on what? Well, um, I suppose honestly that it tends to be gut feel more than anything else. Um, so when I interview somebody, my interview question is always the same. It's what do you just, ask? I said, tell me the story of your life and, and the decisions that you made along the way and why you made them. And then, um, if, and, it, and also tell me about some of the most difficult problems you worked on and how you solved them. And um, that, that, that question I think is very important because the people that really solve the problem, they know exactly how they solved it. Um, they know the little details. And the people that pretended to solve the problem, they can maybe go one level and then they get stuck. Young people globally want to be like Elon Musk. What's your advice to them? I think that probably they shouldn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you? <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, not as much fun being me as you'd think. I don't know. You don't think so? No. There's definitely, it could be worse for sure. <laughs> but it's, um, I, I, I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I want to be me. Okay. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> if, uh, you know, I, I think advice, I mean, if you want to make progress in things, I think that um, the, the, the best analytical framework for understanding the future is physics. Um, I'd recommend studying the, uh, the, the thinking process around physics, like not, not just not, not, not the equations. I mean, the equations certainly they're helpful, but the, the, the way of thinking in physics is the, it's the best framework for understanding things that are counterintuitive. Um, and, um, and, you know, always taking the position that you are to some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong over time. Um, the, I think one of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like you want something to be true, even if it isn't true, um, and so you ignore the things that uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. Um, this is a very difficult trap to avoid, um, and like I said, it's certainly one that I uh, find myself in having problems with. But if you just take that approach of you're always to some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong and, and solicit critical feedback, particularly from friends. Like friends, particularly friends, if somebody loves you, they want the best for you. They don't want to tell you the bad things. Um, so you have to ask them, you know, and say, really, I, I really do want to know. <laughs> and, and then they'll tell you. You don't need college to learn, learn stuff, okay? Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want for free. It is not a question of learning. Um, there, there is a value that colleges have, which is like, you know, seeing whether somebody's, is, can somebody work hard at something, including a bunch of sort of annoying homework assignments and still do their homework assignments uh, and, and kind of soldier through and, and, and get it done. You know, that's, that's like the main value of college, and then also, you, you know, if you, you if you probably want to hang around with a bunch of people your own age for a while instead of going right into the workforce, um, so I think colleges are basically for fun and to prove you can do your chores, but they're not for learning. Well, we have a lot of good good people at SpaceX that, you know, um, a lot of really talented people. Uh, 
In fact, I wonder like sometimes how we can make use of their talents in the best way because you know I think we're often not using their talents in the best way. Um, yeah, but I, I, you know, to, to the point of the question that was just asked, I want to make sure Tesla recruiting does not have anything that says requires university because that's absurd. Uh, but there is a requirement of evidence of exceptional ability. Like you just can't, if you're trying to do something exceptional, they must have evidence of exceptional ability. I don't consider going to college evidence of exceptional ability. In fact, ideally you dropped out and did something. I mean, obviously, you know, we look at like, you know, Gates is a pretty smart guy, he dropped out. Uh, Jobs is pretty smart, he dropped out. You know, Larry Ellison, smart guy, he dropped out. I'm like, obviously not needed. So, did Shakespeare even go to college? Uh, probably not. I mean, <laughs> it's very important to, to seek out, uh, to actively seek out um, and listen very carefully to negative feedback. Um, and this is something that people tend to avoid because mm -hmm. it's, it's painful. painful yeah. um, but but the, I think this is a very common mistake, is to, to not actively seek out and listen to uh, negative feedback. Where do you do that? Do you go into forums? Um, do you go into Twitter? Like, what, what are your uh, areas where you go to look for feedback on, let's say, the Tesla? Well, it's like every, everyone I talk to is, um, in fact, when, um, when friends get a product, I say, look, I d don't tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. Right. Um, and, and because otherwise your friend is not going to tell you what he doesn't like. Right. This guy's going to say, oh, I love this and that, and, and, and then and leave out the, this is the stuff I don't like list. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to be your friend, want, you know, it doesn't want to offend you. So, um, so you really need to, 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 to sort of coax negative feedback. Um, and, you should, and you know that if somebody is your, is your friend or at least not your enemy and they're giving you negative feedback, um, then they may be wrong, but it's coming from a good place. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes even your enemies give you good negative feedback. When I Unfortunately, I, I, one, one does have to be focused on the short term and money coming in when creating a company because otherwise the company will, will die. So the, the, I think that a lot of times people think like creating companies going to be fun. I would say it's, not, it's really not that fun. I mean, there are periods of fun and there are, there are periods of where it's, where it's just awful. Um, and particularly if you're the CEO of the company, um, you actually have a distillation of all the worst problems in the company. Um, so there's no point in spending your time on things that are going right. So you only spend on things on your time on things that are going wrong. And, and there are things that are going wrong that s other people can't, can't take care of. So you have like the worst, you have a filter for the crappest problem in the company. <laughs> the most pernicious and painful problem. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it's it, I think you have to feel quite compelled to do it um, and have a, a fairly high pain threshold. And there's a friend of mine who, who says like starting a company is like staring into the abyss and, and eating glass. Um, and there's some truth to that. Um, the staring into the abyss part is that you're going to be constantly facing the, the um, extermination of the company. Because uh, most, most startups fail. Uh, it's like 90% arguably 99% of, of startups fail. So, uh, so, so you, you, that, that's the staring into the abyss part. You're const constantly saying, okay, this, if, if, if I don't get this right, the company will die. Um, it should be quite stressful. Quite stressful. And, and then um, the, the eating glass part is you've got, you've, got to do, you've got to do the problems. You've got, to, you've got to work on the problems that the company needs you to work on, not the problems you want to work on. And, and so that the that's, you end up working on problems that, that uh, you'd really wish you weren't working on. And so that's, that's the eating glass part. Um, and that goes on for a long time. So how do you <laughs> keep your focus on the big picture when you're constantly faced with, we could be out of business in a month? Well, it's, it's just a very small percentage of mental energies on the, on the big picture. Like, you know, you know, you know where you, you're generally head, heading for, and and the, the actual path is going to be some sort of zigzaggy thing in that direction. Um, and try not to deviate too far from the path that, that, that you want to be on, but you're going to have to do that to some degree. Um, 
But I, I don't want to. I don't want to diminish the. I mean, I think the, prod, the profit motive is a is a is a good one if the rules of an industry are properly set up. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong with profit. In fact, profit just means that uh, people are paying you more for the, the, whatever you're doing than you're spending to create it. That's a good thing. <laughs> and and if, if you're not, if, if that's not the case, then you'll be out of business, and rightfully so.